Welcome to History for Granite. Join me to explore ancient Egypt. Please subscribe, and together we'll uncover secrets from the past written in stone. I am truly excited to share with all of you that a secret passage inside the Great Pyramid may have been uncovered. Of the many speculations offered about the Great Pyramid throughout history, secret passages inside are among the most popular. With its complex arrangement of chambers, corridors, and air channels, it's only natural to wonder if other unknown spaces are hidden just out of sight. Considering the allure of finding such secrets, it's remarkable how few excavations have been made within the pyramid over the last 4,000 years. After excavating inside was forbidden, many authors and researchers still offered up theories about where hidden areas exist and how the stonework of the pyramid leads them to such conclusions. As entertaining as these thought exercises are, I have always been reluctant to indulge in that kind of speculation. The primary reason is that I don't think the Great Pyramid was designed to conceal hidden treasure, nor did it use architecture to intentionally disguise its layout. The clearest manifestation of this concept are the granite plugs blocking the ascending passage, which clearly advertise that something of interest lies behind them. The Grand Gallery is also akin to a giant billboard, advertising the King's Chamber is just beyond it. The ancient Egyptians understood that with thousands of workers and decades of construction, no secret of its design could be kept safe. Everything about the Great Pyramid is quite conspicuous, and there may have been nothing left inside for intruders to plunder after the Giza necropolis was abandoned. Despite the absence of secret treasures, the Great Pyramid does contain empty spaces that were forgotten after it was built. Most famously, the so-called relieving chambers above the King's Chamber weren't discovered until 1837 when Howard Weiss blasted his way into them. In 2017, the Scan Pyramids mission also proved that empty space lies behind the chevrons above the entrance and a big void sits above the Grand Gallery. This revelation was characterized as What they have been announced today is not a discovery. And also The most important discovery on the 21st century. By former Secretary General Zahi Hawass, depending upon if he was the person making the announcement. The Great Pyramid's North Face Corridor was first unveiled in March 2023 with an endoscopic camera. At the official press conference, Zahi Hawass proclaimed that it meant Pharaoh Khufu was still buried inside. The real burial chamber of Khufu should be underneath that tunnel. After nearly two years, there has been no follow-up to this announcement. I've not seen any Egyptologist reject Hawass' claims about a secret burial, and that press conference was the only official statement on the North Face Corridor. What exactly is the public supposed to believe? A good way to judge if someone can be trusted on a topic is to see if their predictions come true. Shortly after the announcement of the North Face Corridor images, I made a video analyzing the available information. Here is an excerpt of that video from March of 2023. The apparent joints in the floor seem more conducive for a narrow access point, most likely the smallest floor block which, if removed, would allow a person to slip through. Today I am excited to share that more imagery inside the North Face Corridor has been published, and my prediction may in fact be correct. In October of 2024, without publicity, the Bulletin of the French Society of Egyptology included a new paper from the Scan Pyramids team about the North Face Corridor. Subsequent image captures have revealed more information about the space. Most excitingly, the camera was turned around and pointed back towards the chevrons that we see from the outside. In the floor on the eastern side of the corridor, a roughly 45 by 55 centimeter hole has been cut and a smaller block placed within it. If it's a secret passage inside the Great Pyramid you want, here is the best candidate I have ever seen. Now, full disclaimer, I still don't have enough visual information to be 100% certain with this interpretation. I'm working from only two pictures, neither of which is high in resolution. The new Scan Pyramids paper also does not offer any commentary on the architectural features of the North Face Corridor. 
Their mission was constrained to documenting the space, and I don't think they were allowed to interpret it. But when I see this hole cut into the floor of the North Face Corridor, I can't imagine any other purpose than facilitating access to the now-destroyed vaulted space above the entrance. If you're unfamiliar with this space, I recommend my early video on the topic from before the North Face Corridor was revealed. The access hole being cut into the floor blocks suggests the hole was made after the floor was installed. It's as if the vaulted space above the entrance was sealed when the North Face Corridor was constructed, and then afterwards the hole was made to regain access inside. I won't repeat my full argument about why the builders of the Great Pyramid would do this, but I have proposed these vaulted spaces were used to test the new architecture design of the vaulted ceiling. A proper test required inspection, and inspection required access, which therefore required this hole. Making this prediction and later finding evidence to support it is exciting, but I'm not going to claim total vindication with my earlier analysis. I've learned a lot in the past two years, and my understanding continues to evolve. So let's look at the other new evidence in the North Face Corridor and see what lessons we can take from it. I'll start by clarifying what we cannot see properly, and that remains the layout of the floor. A thick layer of dust obscures the joints separating individual blocks. The Scan Pyramid's paper is only confident in identifying this lengthwise floor block on the northeastern end. Some dark lines on the floor are actually spider webs, which are also seen hanging from the ceiling. If there's a way inside, spiders always manage to find it. This includes all the way up into the air channels of the Great Pyramid. I previously mistook this diagonal line as a floor joint, and other angles show that it is probably just a spider web. Confoundingly, the center line of the floor may be both a joint and a spider web aligned very closely. No wonder I was a bit confused. The floor layout isn't as important now, other than noting that if some beams don't span the entire width of the corridor, then it's not a true weight-relieving space. A detail we can see much better now is the alignment of the blocks making up the saddle vault ceiling. I previously emphasized how pyramid chambers offset chevron ceiling blocks, and this contrasted the matching pairs above the entrance and within the North Face Corridor. An improved look at the corridor ceiling shows that some blocks do seem perfectly aligned, others nearly aligned, and one entirely staggered. Whether this arrangement of stones was carefully chosen or haphazardly laid down, it remains distinct from the purely staggered design of pyramid chamber ceilings. Circular cuttings are observed in almost every block of the ceiling, demonstrating that logs were used to prop up both sides. Additionally, some related cuttings into the floor for support logs can now be seen. They appear similar to the ones found in the floor of Campbell's chamber above the King's chamber. The southern end of the North Face Corridor is confirmed to be elevated, however a small section of the western wall is obscured in the very back. We also can't see the elevated floor with any detail. A slightly improved view of the south wall gives me enough information to interpret the white vertical stripe in the center. Above the stripe there is a small ledge just below the apex of the ceiling, perhaps where a small part of the block has broken off. I believe rainwater trickles down into the north face corridor, and a small pool accumulates on that ledge. Limestone dust dissolves into the standing water, but eventually overflows along the wall, creating the streaking. You can see the same effect on the bent pyramid, where open cavities in the casing stones have similar staining patterns beneath them. Interestingly, the north wall of the North Face Corridor has another fracture near the apex. The fragile point of these chevrons may have snapped off when a second pair of chevrons was placed on top of them. Notably, the broken fragment from this damage is not seen inside the corridor, and would therefore have been removed during construction. Lastly, it remains unclear if the southern wall is laid underneath the ceiling chevrons or placed behind them. No doubt this is the next area everyone will hope for a closer inspection. Before we get to other potential hidden passages, I want to elaborate on the greater context for the North Face Corridor. The evidence against this space as purely a structural, weight-relieving feature remains strong. It doesn't follow the earlier and more logical design of the Meidum Pyramid's weight-relieving spaces. 
These protective areas are located directly above passages and chambers, including the inclined angle of a descending corridor. Furthermore, the North Face Corridor doesn't follow the best practice of staggering ceiling chevrons as seen in the pyramid chambers. The North Face Corridor also doesn't have its floor blocks span the entire vaulted space, as we see in the relieving chambers above the King's Chamber. Finally, the North Face Corridor is above a narrow passage near the edge of the pyramid, which doesn't need reinforcement. In contrast, the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid bears the heaviest load, but Scan Pyramids has shown there is no empty space above it to offer protection. So why are some areas of the Great Pyramid given extra protection, but not others? While I still propose the North Face Corridor and Entrance Vault were used to test a new building technique, it may not be their only purpose. This empty space still takes some pressure off the passage below, even if it wasn't structurally required. The reason the entrance to the Great Pyramid, the Grand Gallery, and the King's Chamber all have empty spaces high above them is because these areas are the most visually striking. It is these three locations where people would look up in awe and perhaps notice any imperfections, such as a crack in the stones. Early pyramids demonstrated that cracks would appear in blocks even though their passages and chambers were structurally sound. The builders knew their passage and chamber designs could withstand the weight above, but in the Great Pyramid they wanted them to look nicer than before. The irony of the king's chamber ceiling cracking may be what caused the ancient Egyptians to abandon this strategy in the future. The Great Pyramid's magnificent architecture was designed to be seen by the living, and only living people would be concerned with superficial cracks. This explains the odd, haphazard design of the North Face Corridor, an experiment to test both a novel ceiling design and the amount of reinforcement required to prevent superficial cracking in the passage below it. But as I predicted years ago, a proper test requires inspection. What stage of construction might the builders be still inspecting these chevron ceilings? This potential access hole to the entrance vault could only have been plugged from inside the North Face Corridor, and this suggests there was no additional exit to the pyramid exterior, which has been lost to time. For ongoing access to these spaces, it would have been simpler to have a second entrance at the exterior of the pyramid, but this clearly was not done. If it had been, this access hole would have been plugged from the opposite direction. The very fact that this access point was plugged at all is quite remarkable. The plugging seems totally unnecessary. It would never have been seen if the pyramid was intact, and doesn't appear to lead anywhere worth protecting. So why was it done? The most counterintuitive design feature of Old Kingdom pyramids is that the unused areas are sealed up, and the important areas are left open. If you can wrap your brain around this concept, the design of these monuments will seem less mysterious. The main entrances to pyramids were mostly left open. The physical evidence shows no signs of plugging, and the odds of every pyramid passage bearing no trace of plugging is astronomically low. However, secondary entrances were entirely plugged, and only modern archaeology of the past two centuries has bothered to unplug them. For whatever reason, it was important for the builders to seal up unused spaces of the pyramids. It's quite the twist of fate that a modest hole may have been plugged here, because otherwise the North Face Corridor would have been discovered at least 700 years ago. In fact, when Flinders Petrie studied the chevrons above the entrance in the 19th century, he writes, quote, the thickness of these blocks is only 33 inches, and there are no others exactly behind them, as I could see the horizontal joints of the stones running on behind them for some inches. End quote. Petrie could only see the blocking stone and the floor of the North Face Corridor, which seemed so inconspicuous, he presumed nothing of interest lay beyond. How amazing that this unremarkable stone visible for countless visitors, may have concealed a forgotten passageway. A noticeable characteristic of the potential blockage is that this stone is not pushed square and flush against the large chevron, and is instead angled back a bit. However, I wonder about the stone next to it as well. There are a few subtle hints that both sides may be blocking stones. The low-resolution 3D imagery published by Scan Pyramids shows the western side of the floor also slopes down a bit. 
Either or both stones could be plugs, but the western one seems larger and more obscured by the floor dust. Now, the important question for researchers is, how can more investigation take place? The shape and size of the blockage is not 100% clear. It could be two or more smaller blocks. From the Scan Pyramids paper, I estimate blockage on the east side at about 33 centimeters wide, 38 centimeters deep, and 45 centimeters tall. This equals less than 320 pounds of stone. Plugging blocks may also be mortared, which would make them more difficult to move. But if there is the will and desire to enter the North Face Corridor, I think the most logical course of action is to pry a plugging stone loose and push it up and back the same way it was inserted. I think this could be done with minimal risk of damaging the pyramid or spoiling archaeological evidence. The North Face Corridor doesn't appear to contain critical evidence that would be ruined by people entering it. Perhaps the amount of limestone dust on the floor could hypothetically offer insight into how much rainwater has penetrated the space if such a calculation could be made. If researchers were to enter the North Face Corridor, then other hidden details might be brought to light. There could be workers' graffiti marks hiding under the dust or in dark corners of the corridor. Most importantly, ground-penetrating radar scans could be conducted on the south wall. The million-dollar question is if the North Face Corridor is the end of the line, or if other sealed spaces lay beyond it. The Scan Pyramid's muography hasn't detected empty voids past the corridor, but that doesn't mean a plugged-up passageway does not exist. The ancient Egyptians plugged up unused passages, and only close inspection can determine if that occurred beyond this wall. Following the precedent of narrow access on the north side, I would favor the smallest corner block in the back as the most likely candidate for a sealed passage. This potential access point is very tight, only enough space for a small person to squeeze through. This wasn't a passage for conveying construction materials, it could only be access for a worker conducting an inspection. Perhaps it is at last time for people to enter and inspect the North Face Corridor once again. For those of you in France, the Dassault Systems Teleport at the City of Architecture and Heritage in Paris has an immersive space where the North Face Corridor can be experienced in virtual reality. Thanks again to the Scan Pyramids team for making such discoveries possible. Whether or not the new mysteries beyond the North Face Corridor will be explored is now up to the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities. I hope they agree the possibility for discovery is worth an investigation, and that the story of the Great Pyramid is still unfolding before us. Whatever happens, I'll keep shedding light on the clues as best I can. The public deserves better than ridiculous tales of a pharaoh hiding under every rock inside the pyramid. The evidence is now laid before you, and everyone can decide for themselves whose predictions about the Great Pyramid really do come true. Thanks to everyone who watched this video to the end. Please subscribe to the channel to see more of this content, give a like or comment as you see fit, and above all, remember to ask your friends if they take their history for granted.